Hello, everyone. Um, oh, so how can I switch the slide? All right. Um, so I'm Sami Makadem. I'm working at uh, Circle with uh, these awesome colleagues sitting sitting over there. Um, I was wondering uh, for how long I've been working on MISP, um, and it turns out uh, I find back my first pull request that I did a bit more than four years ago, uh, which was, as Alec mentioned, about graphs. So it was the actual the event graph that you have when you visualize an event. You can see the link and relationship that you have between entities in MISP. Um, okay, so as Alex mentioned, we are going to see this uh, uh, this new feature, the MISP workflows. Um, uh, but first, it's always good to remember why we developed it at the first place. Um, so the main thing I think is uh, we wanted to to let users be able to modify how MISP behaves, um, and we wanted also to let them um, hook specific actions so that they can run their custom script or actions. So some of the use cases that you can that you could do with this uh, feature is you can prevent the publication of event if they don't pass sanity checks. Uh, this can be very very useful, as we saw this morning on the presentation. Um, also preventing querying third-party services uh, and so on. We'll see some demo about that, how you can do it. Uh, but yeah, it's basically the, the list is almost endless of what you, you want to do uh, and what the features allows you to do. Uh, but to do some of these tasks, we already have some few things in MISP that can help you do that. Uh, you could use the API to pull the data and then perform some reporting or send messages. Um, or you could, as it was mentioned this morning by Robert, subscribe to the uh, PubSub channel, uh, so the ZMQ channel, and then to trigger specific actions uh, and so on. But this is great, but we were really missing the, the feedback part where a script would be able to tell me not to do something. Um, and for that, uh, we really try to, to develop this, and this is the, the MISP workflows. Um, so first of all, why did we develop this? Uh, it's because, well, I love automation, I love automating things, uh, and I think there is no, nothing more satisfying um, than developing something and then seeing the result of that automation. Uh, and if there are developers around here, and I guess there are some, uh, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, but also we wanted to give more control to users on how their server behave and what they can do with their data. Okay, so this is how this small presentation will be structured. Um, it might be a bit faster than that because I'm already starting uh, a bit late, but we'll skip the annoying part. Um, so I guess, yeah, everyone is familiar with myth, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and at the end of the presentation, and this is the, the main takeaway of this, is we want to have feedback about that features. Because it's brand new, and we, are, we don't know much people using it, so we, we really want to involve the community in developing and improving this, uh, and to fix th things that are already missing. So a bit of fundamental first. Um, so this is basically how it works in, in a very simplified way. Um, so an event happened in MISP. So uh, by event, I don't mean like a MISP event. Uh, I mean like something that happened uh, that was caused because someone or a script interacted with MISP. Um, and then it will run optional condition and check if they are satisfied. And if it is the case, then MISP uh, will, and the workflow, will execute all the potential action which some of them might prevent the original action or original event to happen at the first place. Uh, but what kind of events can actually happen in MISP? Well, basically anything when you interact with the platform. So if a new event is created, a new attribute is created, a tag is added, an attribute is modified, someone posts a discussion or a question, creates a proposal, a new user is created, well, basically anything. Uh, that's, uh, could basically generate a log entry, uh, either on MISP side, but also on uh, the uh, server side. Uh, and in MISP workflow terminology, uh, so if an event can be hooked, we call them a trigger. Um, now for condition, there are mainly conditions about the data that is being used in the workflow. Uh, so if it's the case of an event, you could check, for example, that 
the event is tagged with a specific tag. Uh, if it is about an attribute, you can check the distribution level of that attribute. Same for other data points. But we also introduce a very generic way for you to express condition, as you will see later on. And in the workflow terminology, we call them logics modules. Um, and the way you can like compose all of these comp uh, condition is by linking these modules together. So that's why we call them modules. Uh, and now for action, so we had event condition, and now we have action. Uh, what kind of action can you do? Well, you can send emails, you can perform enrichment, uh, send chat messages on Microsoft Teams or uh, Mattermost. These are the two that are currently supported. Uh, you can also attach local tags and so on. And again, in the MISP workflow terminology, they are called action modules because you can also chain them. And so this is what uh, a MISP workflow looks like. So it's basically just the sequence of all nodes to be executed uh, in the oh it's working uh, in, in this uh, in in the order there. So it's basically just a connected graph where you can mul have multiple execution paths depending on if you add condition or not. And uh, just a, a side note, as it's stated there, uh, workflows are always linked to a trigger. So you cannot have floating workflow without any entry point. And only one trigger can have only one workflow. So you cannot have multiple workflows per trigger. This is just side notes. Um, so let's see quickly uh, how a workflow would execute when you publish an event. So this is an example. Um, so if an event is about to be published, then the workflow uh, listening to the event published trigger will be run. Then condition will be evaluated and the action would be executed. Now, if you come back to the previous slide, this is exactly what you have there. So we have the entry point, the event published on the left side. Uh, then you have the optional condition. And then afterward, you have the action. So in this case, this is a stop execution. Um, and based on the outcome of the execution of this action, you have basically three outcomes. A success, where in our publishing case, it would just complete the publishing. You can have a failure if a module fails or throws an error or something, or a blocked operation. What I mean by block is by using this stop execution module. Um, and if it's not a success, so basically if it's a failure or blocked, uh, in our publishing case, it would stop the publication, so the publication would not take place, and it, was, it would also log the reason why it stopped the, pu the publishing. So in MISP workflow, we have two types of workflow. We have the blocking and the non-blocking one, or regular one. So with the blocking workflow, you can prevent the original action to happen. For the publishing example, you can prevent the publishing to happen. So the publish workflow is actually a blocking workflow because you can prevent it. Um, now for regular workflows, these uh, you cannot prevent them because the original action already happened. Like an example would be after an attribute has been saved. Uh, you cannot block it because it already, had, it already has been saved. So you cannot go back to the future to prevent that operation to happen. At... Um, so, small list of the currently supported action modules. Uh, tag operation, so you can add, remove tags, you can send notification, you have some webhooks that are already there. Uh, this list is uh, slowly but surely uh, growing. And for the logic modules, they basically just allows you to redirect the execution flow as, uh, as you saw on the, on the few, few slides before. For example, if, uh, if it's satisfied, you would do this set of action. If it doesn't, you would do that set of action instead. So it's basically if condition, but you also have like, uh, other type of module that we not see today, uh, which is called, uh, concurrent task is just transform the remaining part of a workflow into a non-blocking one. So, for example, if you have, if you have a publish workflow and then you want to send messages and emails and so on, you don't want this operation to be uh, preventing MISP to do the publishing, but you want this operation to be done afterward, you can just use this concurrent task module uh, that would delay the execution of the remaining part of the graph. So what, where are all these uh, action and uh, 
um, conditional modules come from. So we have multiple sources. The first one is the built-in default module that MISP offer. So these are part of the MISP code base. They are maintained by the MISP development team. Um, and yeah, basically, it's an all-you-can-eat buffer. You just take it uh, inside your workflow, use it, and, and that's it. Uh, they are always included by default whenever you update your MISP instance. Now, the second source is actually the one that you would define yourself. Uh, so we have multiple ways to define them. You will see we have a way to define them in PHP, but also in Python. Um, so they are written by users. Initially, that's how you would actually um, do your modules or your own custom module. You would write it yourself, and then you would send it us to us uh, by creating a pull request, sending over, uh, I don't know, chat channel. We prefer pull requests, obviously, but do as you are pleased. Um, yeah, and the advantage of using this custom module in PHP is that you can reuse some functionalities that exist already in MISP. So you could extend existing modules. So for example, we had um, the webhook uh, module. You could extend it to do some webhooking for specific services, such as, for example, the Microsoft Teams modules is actually extending the webhook module from the, uh, from the default module uh, code base. Um, yeah, so it's easier, it's easier to reuse a part of the, the source code like this. But the third way, which is, uh, slightly easier to integrate and to use with people that want to develop new things, is to rely on the MIST module service, where you could develop your own module, but in Python this time instead of PHP. Uh, so you can use any Python libraries. For example, we have a Mattermost module that allows you to send chat notification. This is done in in, uh, in Python, because it's much easier. You just import the Mattermost library, the send the message, and that's it. It's easy to do and straightforward. Um, yeah, so I think it's the best plug and play system that you can use to create your own, and it's easier to integrate with other tools as well. Um, now, for triggers, um, we currently have 10, uh, and three of them are blocking workflow, so we can prevent an action to happen. So we saw an example for the event publish. Uh, I can see that with the event publish workflow, but you also have one with uh, enrichment before query. And we'll see an example for this one. This is the only thing that you have no control over. Uh, so this, uh, if you want to have a new trigger, you have to get in touch with us so that we create it and we make it runnable by MISP. So if you need a new trigger, let us know. Um, yeah, so actually let's, let's quickly have a, a look at uh, two demos. So that demo I just showed the, the interface. Um, two simple ones. The first one is to send an email when a new event comes in. So actually it's not really useful as a workflow because that feature already exists in MISP and I guess you are already spammed by that feature. Um, and the second demo is uh, just blocking the query to third-party services, such as VirusTotal, when an attribute is tagged with Cesar TLP red and P or PAP red. So let's see if I can quickly switch. Or, ah, yes, it's not mirror, so it's going to be fun. All right, so I said uh, the first one is uh, when an event is created. Hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, so to access workflow, you go to administration and then list workflows, and you will be redirected to the list of triggers. So for, um, what was it, uh, when a new event is created? So we have um, event after save new, this one. So see, extremely simple. You have the trigger on the left side, and then it's linked to the send mail module that would send a mail with a, uh, this uh, email subject, um, and then this body as the content of the mail. So very simple. Now for the, the second example is the one that would block en enrichment or querying third party services based on the context. So it is enrichment, this one. So you can see how, it's a bit tough with the touchpad, but you can see how basically easy it is to, to do it. So you have this enrichment before query trigger. That is a blocking, meaning that we can prevent the action to happen in MISP. Um, and then we check with the if tag module. We check if 
the tags inherited by the attribute is one of these two. If it is the case, we just stop the execution, meaning that it will prevent the enrichment to happen. And if it's not, well, nothing happened. Let's go back to the presentation. So, let's see how you can start using workflows in your uh, MISP uh, instance. Um, well, workflows were introduced in version 2.4.160. Uh, that was done in August. Uh, and the only thing that you have to do is just to update your MISP server. That's the first thing. The second thing, if you want to also be able to integrate with the MISP modules, would be to also to update all your sub-modules, uh, especially the MISP uh, module service and restart the server. So, yeah, upgrades, updates, and so on, this is extremely important to get the latest hot features, uh, but also to get all the fixes, UI bug and improvement that we, that we have. But most importantly, I think, it's to have the security fixes put in place. So just a small reminder. Um, all right, so how can you start using the workflow? Well, you have to go to the settings, base settings, go on the plugin page, and then uh, go on the workflow tab and just enable uh, the feature. Um, if now you want to also enjoy uh, the integration in Python and not in PHP, uh, well, you also have to make sure that uh, the MISP, uh, MISP module service is also enabled, uh, as you can see on the, on, under the action panel. Um, yeah, then you can go on your uh, list modules. So it's basically not this interface. You can view the trigger, but you can see if you go on list modules, all the modules that are currently supported uh, by your instance. Um, yeah. So everything is ready. Now you can start building a workflow. So that's what we are going to see. How can you build a workflow like the one I just showed previously? So first, you have to go to administration, then workflow, then you have to go uh, on the trigger and then enable it now. I'm just kidding, I'm just too lazy to write this slide, so let's directly jump into a live demo instead. All right, so this is, um, we'll do it for event publish. Uh, where is it? Ah, this is not the list of triggers. Mm. So event publish. So you open it, the trigger is already in place. Um, so the only thing that you have to do is to use uh, the action or uh, the logic modules. So what we want to do now is to prevent an event to be published if it's not tagged with, well, if it's tagged with TLP red and, or PAP red. It's, it's stupid, but let's do it because we can. So we go in logic, then we go in if tag, we drag it, drop it, drop it, take the output of the trigger and connect it to the input of this module. Then we select the scope. We say that if the event is tagged with either TLP red or PAP red, and then we stop the publishing. So in that case, we use the stop execution module. We connect it. We use the output of condition satisfied because if these tags are present, we want to block it. And then we save it. That's it. So let's, let's check. Let's check if it's working now. Adding an event. So let's add a tag. I'm a bit struggling with the touchpad, sorry for that. Oh, and then we need to add an attribute. Because you cannot publish empty event. That's the reason why I'm adding an attribute. No, foo <laughs> All right. And now let's hit the publish. Uh, 
and then I can keep refreshing, it will never be published because it will stop the execution. Uh, but now what we can do is, instead of just like blocking the execution, if it's satisfied, we could also send a message to like Mattermost. So like this uh, chat channel that we have here. So for that, I have prepared already a module. Uh, spoiler, we have blueprints. Um, it's just so that I don't have to type all of these access. So this is a Mattermost module. Uh, I just gave like the the host name on which the Mattermost server is hosted on, uh, some access information, and then the template. So in this case, we have, oh, come on. We have this template that is used as the message, and then I can save it. Uh, and this time I will reverse the condition. No, actually, it's, it's good. I will just reverse it. It's not tagged. Almost. And now I will publish it. Suspense. Woohoo. And now you can see that the event is published because it was not, it did not execute the stop execution module. All right. So back to the presentation. I have to speed up because I'm running out of time already. So some consideration to uh, to have when you are working with workflows. Uh, you cannot save uh, workflows that like create loops. Uh, you can imagine what happened if you end up in this case. So this will prevent that. Uh, there's just one caveat with this: uh, is if you create a workflow that reruns itself. So this is an example where this workflow would never stop because on the first one you add a tag or you remove a tag if the event is saved. Uh, and then adding a tag actually perform an event save operation which run this workflow again. And by adding and removing the same, same tag over and over again, you just keep the workflow going. And there is just something I want to mention. So uh, Robert asked this morning about the, the local tags for workflow and you can see it's already there. I can already create uh, a local or global tags for that. And uh, it's not on the screenshot. Oh, yes, it is actually. It's awesome. We also support the, the latest feature about tag, uh, which is the relationship where you can add relationship for tag, but that, that will be covered by Andrash. Um, and last point is uh, we do not allow multiple connection from the sa same output uh, because, well, as a user, you don't really know what's going to happen. Will it send the mail or will it stop the execution? We don't really know. So as the execution order is not guaranteed for that, uh, and it makes things more confusing, we just don't allow this. Uh, this I can skip. Not really interesting. Advanced usage. So you see we have blueprints. You can save workflows, uh, so multiple modules with their configuration and how they are set up. Uh, you can save them, export them, share them with the community. We also have uh, a repository on GitHub that hosts, I think, two blueprints, but it's going to grow, especially if we receive more contribution for other people. Uh, that is not interesting. Uh, that, no, no. Yeah, I'm running out of time, so I have to speed up a bit. So how can you debug a workflow? Pop, 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 pop. Let's go to the last one. So we have many things to, to debug. You can... Uh, debug the execution and the outcome of the execution of that workflow. You can de debug individual modules and the outcome. Uh, you can do some live debugging. Just show the, the, the picture. So like this one, uh, where you see in live when a workflow starts and which modules are being executed along with the data that they received from the previous module. Um, you can also rerun uh, or test your workflow with custom data, as you can see on this small screenshot. And last but not least, if you are writing your own module, um, either in PHP or in Python, you can do stateless execution, as you can see on this picture too. Uh, but that it's uh, up to you to figure out how you can find this interface. Um, extending the system, uh, so I've mentioned you can extend in PHP or in Python. This is how you do it in PHP. The slide will be available, don't worry. This is how you do it in Python. Uh, but basically for both systems, we have created a set of functions and helper to help you quickly get started. 
uh, and in, in few words, the configuration of each module is just a variable that you have to, to create. Uh, and in the end, you just need to implement the, the logic, so the handling function. Um, this is a list of IDs that we have for workflow that we could integrate in the uh, blueprint library that we plan to share. Uh, yeah. If you have any other crazy IDs, please let us know so that the list can keep growing. And now, future work, so what still needs to be done? Well, more modules, more logic modules, even more triggers. So last week, we created two, uh, three, three, three new triggers, or two, I don't remember, two or three. Uh, but the list keeps growing. Obviously, more documentation, because we are really bad at documenting things that you could have figured already. Uh, but still, it's, I think it's more or less okay. Uh, and yeah, on the fly, data override, so it's just a means to to modify data from module to module and to save the state of the data immediately in the database. But that is for future work, obviously. So final words. Uh, so this feature, I think, uh, if you already have a solid pipeline established, uh, I'm not sure the misworkflow might be as relevant for you. Maybe you could extract part of that pipeline uh, for the curation, for example, you could extract part of it and make it into a workflow. But for those who already have a solid pipeline, I don't think it's as, as interesting as, it's, as, as it is for people that just want to set up a new pipeline or curation process. Um, yeah, so we are giving uh, this workflow session at first CTI. So it's going to be workshop oriented. It's four hours, I believe. And the, the whole idea is to, to show them how, to show the attendees how to create integration and new modules and to also sit with them, provide support on integration, on development, uh, and also discuss about various things on how you could better integrate the workflows into their pipeline. Um, all right. So thanks everyone for joining. If you have any question about that or if you have any crazy ideas on how we could improve things, uh, let us know. And if you plan to use this feature also, please let us know. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I think, I think you got your dose of meme, I think, for <laughs> this, uh, this presentation. Is there any questions? Yeah. I'm worried. It's Antoine. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. Thanks. It's uh, super interesting. Definitely, I will... Uh, get rid of some of my Python script and uh, just implement that using MISPOC workflow. Uh, you went a bit fast on blueprints. Yep. Um, what are those exactly? They are just boxes with pre-populated values, or is it a bit more? So if we take this workflow, for example, you could save a part, a subpart of this workflow into a blueprint. So if I just I grab these three modules, and then I go in blueprint, Save blueprint, then I can give it a name and description. And then I will not take one that contains uh, bad data, but for example, this one, you can see it has two nodes. If I drag one, you can see you can restore the, the, the sub workflow uh, and reuse the configuration that it had when, you, when it was saved. So then you can save it and then export it. So we have also a dedicated interface to, to, manage, to manage this blueprint. You can see I have some of them, similar to the different uh, knowledge base that we have that are based on the GitHub repositories. You can update them, load them, um, and also import them. And I don't see the ex ah, the export is there. Almost, yeah. Yeah, th thanks a lot. I will definitely steal some IDs, and I have some IDs for you to share. Awesome. We can discuss that later. Thank you. Uh, maybe one last, just... Quick question. Is there a way? So if I configure lots of workflows, how can I track them? Can I, is it on the blueprints that I get a description? Or how, is there a naming scheme that I can follow on afterwards? Um, so for example, the first one that you did, the yep. blocking TLP, can I say, well, this is the TLP red block publication that somebody else comes and sees, oh, this is module or this workflow has been defined and this is the description. Yeah, no, David's for, crazy idea. For now, it's only visible to site admins. So only the admins on the server can view the workflow, edit them, and change them. Um, yeah. <laughs> There's not much to, to add, actually. It's, uh, yeah, M maybe we could do a page, like, to show 
And that would be interesting also to to just show the list of triggers and just see if they are enabled or not, and if they are workflow listening to them so that user knows that something is happening uh, with a workflow. That's actually a good idea. I don't have a notebook, but it's there. Last questions? Oh, hello. Uh, can, you, can you show the list of all the workflows? They're uh, already fine. Yeah. Okay. Almost. So those are all the workflows. And uh, when you create... These are all the triggers okay. that you can create a workflow for. So all these triggers, so these are all the actions that can execute a workflow currently. Okay, but the, the um, maybe I didn't understand, but the, the list of the workflows you, de you, you already define. When you define a workflow, mm -hmm. so you have a trigger, yep. you have actions, and... Uh, uh, which one? This one, for example. Oh, okay. Uh, this is a workflow. These are the modules that you can use in this workflow. Um, and yeah. when you save a workflow, uh, how do you define the name of this workflow? So, uh, so, so okay, there, there is not really a name. This is the name. Because you have a one-to-one -one mapping with workflow and triggers, because okay. you can only have one workflow per trigger, and one trigger can only have one workflow. Okay. So the, the name of the workflow is basically the name, the name of, the of the trigger. Okay. No, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, I know I was a bit fast about a lot of the concept. One more question. Hi. Uh, you may have gone over it a little bit, but when you ran that workflow and it stopped the execution and you kept refreshing the page, I, I, I may have missed it, but there was no output to the user, right? That it was being blocked. They just look at it and have no idea what's happening. Yep. So for, for some of the... For some of the workflow, you have a feedback to the user. But for the publishing, you don't have a feedback because the publishing is done by a background worker. So you don't have the feedback anyway. Uh, but for site admin, you have to, to go to the logs. And everything is, uh, is displayed there. So if I go back to the slides, I think I have one about it. Uh, maybe this one. Yeah, this is just a, a logging. But when a workflow starts executing, you can see that it's it's executed in the logs, and you can see the outcome. And I believe I have another one that shows. Is there any intention, or can we request that there be some kind of output to somebody creating one of these events and attempting to publish it, and they see that, hey, it's being blocked? I mean, you can imagine it might add quite a bit of time to them have to go to the back-end engineering yeah. and these other folks say, hey, something's not working. Mm, yeah, so currently, if, if it, the publishing doesn't work because of a workflow, you need to ask a site admin to check out the logs, and they will find entries such as this one, that the execution stop, and that the workflow for trigger publish event returned the following error, execution stop, so that it was blocked. But right now, we don't provide feedback to the user about that. But that's something that we could improve, indeed. Um, this kind of piggybacks on your comment, what we do, because we're using workflows already. The end of all of our blocking workflows right before the end is a tagging operation that tags it with workflow blocked. So we know, we just added it ourselves, but that could be a quick fix um, for your use your... case. That's a Makes sense. Very, very point. <laughs> but actually on the same workflow, uh, what's the effect on hover enrichment? It's example? the same, it will be blocked as well. Uh, and then it doesn't show anything in the graphical user interface. This one shows that uh, it was blocked, actually. So let's. And then as a second question, because you still have this open, uh, can you also say do this for a specific enrichment module only? Uh, not right now. So let's let's try. I think this one is in the. In the to-do list, as far as I know. So let's let's see. Ah, that's even worse. Actually, that's not too bad. That's on my my end because I disabled the the debug, and so as it's not verbose, you don't see the error. But actually, you have the error displayed there. Uh, yeah. So for people that have debugs, you will see the error, but it's not that great. Okay, I think. 
Ah, Lance. Yeah, just one. Yeah. Um, I was wondering if uh, you could chain conditions uh, as an output. If uh, the value is true, then there is an action. And if the value is false, then if the value is one, there is extra, extra. Yeah. That's, that's why we, we have these uh, how input and output modules to express condition, because it okay. makes composition easier. So you could save like uh, the tag, and then if it doesn't have this tag, you could, for example, check for the distribution. Mm. Uh, and chain them like this. Okay. And for example, can you have uh, two outputs if a condition is uh, true? Just in this example, uh, set stop the execution and then, for example, uh, send an email to a specific user. Yeah, then you would have to chain this action. Okay. Fine. Yeah, because it comes back to, to this slide that I need to find back. Yeah, uh, not this one. This one. Because it makes things confusing, because you don't know which one will execute first. This is a stupid example, you would never do this. Mm. Uh, but yeah, if, if the execution order is important, like send domain and, and then send a notification or stuff like this, uh, well, it's better to have them uh, linearly displayed rather than like this. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sami.